Hey everybody, thanks for coming to my 10th episode of Google Games special video. I'd like to thank my mom. If she had never given birth to me, I could have never have made a moderately successful YouTube series on the internet. Thank you, thank you, thanks mom. You did it! You did it! Yeah, you did it! Thanks. <clears throat> hey everybody, welcome back to another video and thank you so much for watching my 10th episode of Goodwill Games. These Goodwill Games episodes have always been some of my favorites to make. Going to thrift stores is actually one of my favorite pastimes, and I love finding random games I know nothing about and sharing whatever happens with you guys. In fact, I love going to the thrift store so much that I decided that I'm gonna do a brand new Goodwill series on this channel, something that's not Goodwill Games or Goodwill Garbage, so uh, keep a lookout for that very soon. And hey, maybe even subscribe if you don't wanna miss those videos. And maybe like the video while you're at it. I hate to do this, but this video took absolutely forever to make. Normally I would do three games, for these videos, but considering this is the 10th episode, I figured we could play 10 games. So needless to say, it's going to take a while. So go grab some popcorn and then eat it. And then come back to watch this insanely long episode. Let's go! Back in the early days of my channel, I covered all the games in the Putt-Putt series. Well, all of them except for a couple of the spin-off games, one of them being Putt-Putt and Pep's Balloonorama. These games usually panned out in a very similar format. Something's gone wrong, but Putt-Putt steps up to save the day by finding some lost animals or buying some party supplies or something like that. They were pretty simple, but there was obviously a lot of love and effort put into them, and I'm sure the story for Putt-Putt and Pep's Balloonorama will be just as good, right? Hang on tight to those balloons, Pep. Uh oh. Come on, Pep. We've got to go get those balloons. Nope. Pep, I gave you one simple task, and yet you still disappoint me. So, you can probably see why I never bothered covering this one. Ready to do something really fun? Okay, why not? Well, I'm ready when you are. Come on, boy, let's have some more fun. Oh, I see. We already were having fun. I didn't notice. So you bounce Pep off of Putt, and then you hit a balloon. I don't really recommend it. It's like that old game Breakout where you hit the ball and break the things, except in this case, it doesn't even make sense. You're supposed to be collecting the lost balloons, but you're not collecting them, you're just blowing them up. Also, in the intro, Pep loses like 10 balloons, but there are a lot more than 10 balloons in this game. There's like a billion. There's tons of levels that go from Putt-Puttville to the zoo, to a cave, to the beach, to freaking outer space. There's alien balloons. How did Pep have and or lose alien balloons? Now that I think about it, this is actually a potential disaster. I saw a documentary one time about the Cleveland Balloon Fest, and that did not go well. Two people even died because of it, and no, I am not making that up. Put put. Pep, you need to listen to me, this is important. Unless you want the death of innocence on your hands because of your complete incompetence, we have to pop all of these balloons. Everyone is counting on us to do it! Actually, I don't wanna. This game is boring. <laughs> I wanted to see if anything interesting happened at the end, but there was no way I was gonna play all the way through this game when I could be doing something more interesting like my taxes or dying. So I looked it up on YouTube instead. Believe it or not, there exists some long play videos out there. This one by LY203 Productions that is three hours and 12 minutes long. Three hours and 12 minutes of mind numbing PP and pep action. Now that is some serious dedication. You're a real trooper. LY203 Productions. And if it takes three plus hours to beat, I'm sure you get a really interesting cutscene, right? Pep, you're the greatest balloon popping pup I know! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> Hooray! <laughs> 
Guys, I gotta be honest, while editing this really long video for the past week, I've gotten a little bit, uh, disgusting. And no, not just in the facial area. TMI? Too bad, because this video is sponsored by Manscaped, the premium global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. Manscaped just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawn Mower 4.0. Wow. The perfect tool for trimming the three Bs, body, butt, and balls. The latter of which I'll be giving you a demonstration right now. Wait, we can't do that? No. You're lost. Manscaping is important. Things are opening back up. You never know when you might need to be, uh, uh, trimmed. And luckily, the Lawnmower 4.0 has ceramic blades with skin safe technology for even the most sensitive areas. And it's even waterproof, so you can use it in the shower if you want. And when you're done, just place it right in the wireless charging dock. Simple as that. And you get up to 90 minutes on a full charge. So what are you waiting for? Join the 2 million men who trust Manscaped for all their modern grooming needs. And you can even get 20% off plus free international shipping with my link in the description below, manscaped.com slash pbg. And thank you again to Manscaped for sponsoring. Up next, I have a game that I'm sure is gonna be a gym. My Little Pony Pinkie Pie's Party. My Little Pony, My Little Pony, oh, got an ID. My Little Pony, My Little Pony, Pinkie's best friends with me. My Little Pony, My Little Pony, why did I buy these toys on eBay for 25 bucks? Hi there, sweetie belle. You look very sweet today. I went over all of Ponyville and hid 20 of Pinkie Pie's presents just like you was. Oh dear. Those presents should have been hidden in Party Cake Place. We need to help find them before we can party can start. Here comes Pinkie Pie. I know she can help. Us find all 20 missing presents. Okay, so I, Pinkie Pie, Nice to meet you. Have to find all the presents for my own party because these absolute morons screwed up this simple task so badly. Oh, look at all those pretty presents. My friends are so wonderful to me. I better get started finding the 20 presents. Sweet Belle hid. This will be so much fun. I mean, it sure looks like we've got a lot of presents right here already, but whatever. It's our birthday and we've got to work. Sweet. To find them, you walk around Ponyville and click on whatever presents you see hidden in the background. Hey, I found a present! Sweet! But some presents you can only get by playing mini games with the other ponies. Mini games like creepily carry a bucket on two legs, creepily dancing on two legs, or scooter race. Oh yeah, dude! Oh! Oh yeah! Oh! Well done. Pretty soon, and I mean pretty soon, because it only takes about 15 to 20 minutes to beat this, you get all the presents and it's time for the party to begin. Happy birthday, Pinkie Pie! Yeah! Happy birthday! I'm going streaky! All right, well, Pinkie Pie's party was pretty sweet. I guess. But let's move on to something completely different, specifically Police Quest SWAT. Welcome to D Platoon, officer. Formed in 1967, the Special Weapons and Tactics Team of the Los Angeles Police Department has held a preeminence within the field of law enforcement and has been the standard bearer for domestic specialized tactical units throughout the world. We are an organization steeped in tradition and pride, where individuals are frequently called upon to perform at levels far above the norm. <laughs> Welcome to D Platoon, Officer. I'm Sergeant Rooker. This is Officer Packmeyer, and he's your element leader. Hello. Hello. I trust you will pwn. I trust you will assault me or Sergeant. A bow, a bow, a bow. We make with one another. Sir, your pot, your c proficiency, moving your hand in an up and down motion in your underwear affects the entire team. You will cover your rear with reefs. If your element leader tells you to probe your fellow officers, I would ask you to curb that temptation and behave professionally. Any questions? Um, I wore a boxer brief today. Is that okay? Today you acted alone and without regard to your element. You let your fellow officers down. That's all. Dismissed. My bad, everybody. 
I'll bet, I'll bet new underwear. There's an absolutely insane amount of tutorial in this game. They just go on and on and on. When do we get to the part where we start messing people up? I mean, uh, protecting and serving? Or whatever our job is, I, I don't know. Admittedly, I probably should have paid more attention, but I just don't have the brain capacity to listen to these guys for one more second. So let's just get into the action. I'm sure I can figure it out. So our first case is to stop a literal grandma who's been mixed up a lot lately. Taking down a crazy grandma wasn't exactly the exciting case I was hoping for, but oh well. Popo Peebs is on the case. Ready? Go. Wait, so... How do you move? Pop, get moving. Um... Uh... I don't know what I'm doing. Get that idiot out of there. Dude, I couldn't figure out how to move. And so they literally sent an officer to just be like, Come on. Come on. Oh, okay. My bad. Discharged. Look, I had to pull you out of there. Your behavior threatened to compromise the situation. Check the briefing room chalkboard for specific topics to study. Are we clear, officer? Yes, sir. Go on. Move it. How to move. <laughs> All right, I now know how to move. So attempt number two and move. Oh, 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 ah, ah, ah. Holy crap, crazy grandma has a gun. Bobo peeps, why? Why couldn't it have been Officer Spunk, whatever his name was? <laughs> <laughs> okay, crazy grandma attempt number three. Let's take her out for real this time. We got the crazy gram. We took her out and put her in cuffs and in jail. She will never see the light of day. Organization steeped in tradition and pride, where individuals are frequently called upon to perform at levels far above the norm. Counter terrorists win. Police Quest SWAT is okay, I guess, but it's way too complicated for its own good, so let's go ahead and move on to whatever we've got next. I'd never heard of the company Purple Moon before, but a few years ago my wife found a stack of Purple Moon games at a thrift store and bought them for me. Well, they apparently made friendship adventures for girls. Deep friendship, love of nature, the confidence to be cool, the courage to dream, it's what girls are all about. Is that true? I wouldn't know, I guess. Girls, let me know in the comments. Are you cool? Their main series seems to be about a girl named Rocket who has everyday normal uh, schoolgirl problems, I guess. But watching Grandma get brutally murdered a minute ago is leaving me with some serious feelings, and I'm not sure Rocket can relate to that. So I think I should share those feelings with some friends. And we might as well explore puzzle-filled paths and search for secret stones also while we're doing, doing that other stuff, I said. Secret paths to the sea! We start off by meeting all of our friends that apparently we keep brooches of inside of a little treasure chest here. They each have some problem largely relating to their parents, school, or something like that. Things at school were going great, at least until this girl started totally copying me. Eh, just let her do it. There, problem solved. <laughs> what can I say, I'm pretty good with kids. What the? How long have you guys been sitting here for? Jeez. They're freaking me out. Especially the ginger. People tease me about how much I love to talk. Um, feel free to elaborate. I really didn't study. You let me see your answers, right? Oh, now we're late. Come on. Ginger didn't know what to do because her friend was being a b <laughs> And so she decided to take a trip down the secret path. Ah. Oh. She found some mushrooms in the secret path, and it helped her to think more clearly. <laughs> On the secret path, she saw many things. She saw puzzles that she had to do in order to solve whatever you do in this game. I don't really know. She looked at different kinds of birds, and there's even a horse. 
But things didn't stay pleasant for long, eventually turning sinister. Dude, this is... This is kind of creepy, actually. Like, what am I... Oh, what is that? In order to win each girl's level, you listen to their problem, walk down their secret path to the sea, and collect all the secret stones in the process. <gasps> that owl had a secret stone! Holy sh! Hey, don't just drop it! That's important! Stupid fairy! And once you do, you get to watch an animated story with a moral related to the issue the girl is having. While I'm clearly not the target demographic, being neither ages 8 to 12 or a girl, Purple Moon is made specifically just for girls, by the way. Please don't tell on me. It is a perfectly pleasant game that is not, it's not, it's not bad. It's not bad. Better than Police Quest SWAT anyway. My only real problem with Secret Paths to the Sea is that the lessons it teaches aren't exactly consistent. For example, this girl's story is listen to your parents, they know what's best, even if you don't want to do what they want you to do, you should just do it anyway. But with this girl, it's if you don't want to do what your parents want you to do, then tell them you don't want to do it, because you shouldn't have to do it. Cut it out with the mixed messages game. I'm depending on you to tell me what to do throughout my adolescent female life. I've never been a young girl before! Okay. Oh yeah, and sometimes it glitches. But honestly, that adds more to the experience than it subtracts, if you ask me. May I help you plant the fields again? Leloy Strong Bra <laughs> What? Alright, let's go from a game that I'm too old to be playing to a game that I'm way too old to be playing. Cheerio! <laughs> yes, Cheerios. Cheerios is a game. <laughs> Cheerios! I guess to be specific, it is Cheerios Playtime. Let's go. Welcome to, them to Cheerios Playtime. There's lots to do. Use this main menu to get around. Visit the animals at the barn. Make cereal at the factory. Paint pictures at the workshop. Make breakfast in the kitchen. Go to the farm and grow the grains used to make cereal. Ready to have some fun? Yes! Click here for help. 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 I wasn't able to pick up one of those new fancy graphics cards, and my PC is chugging trying to run this game. So we're gonna have to get through this pretty quick. Let's make some Cheerios! First, you have to unload the oats from the truck. Okay. Is this, is this how cranes work? It's like, oh wait, no, we, we don't need it over here, dude. You're dropping the wrong place. Oh, oh my, my bad. Uh, let's just go ahead and, uh, there we go. <laughs> so are these crane physics part of the abstract reasoning the back of the box promises to teach us? I mean, it is pretty abstract. So we go step by step through the process of making Cheerios, and I'll give the game one thing. I've learned a lot. I've learned that Cheerios come from the Cheerios queen and are birthed out one... <laughs> at a time, very slowly. In fact, making Cheerios is a slow process just in general. Did you know that only 12 Cheerios can be baked in the Cheerio oven at a time? Yes. And only five whole Cheerios are put into each box. Back in the good old days, they were a little more generous, but times are tough for cereal companies now. And when making one individual Cheerio takes this long, you gotta cut costs wherever you can. And I learned that they hire zero employees in their factory, preferring to let children ages three to five pull the levers and activate the grabby hands that close up the box. You don't have to pay children ages 3 to 5 because hiring children ages 3 to 5 is illegal. Find out how they get away with this practice in the upcoming sequel, Cheerios Corporate Legal Loopholes Time, coming soon for the Nintendo Switch. If you go to the thrift store a lot, there's a few different kind of games you're gonna see. There's sports games, there's games made for kids, there's sports games made for kids, and of course, there's game show games. And for the next game, we have a game show game, specifically a deal or no deal game show game. How many times did I just say the word game? Games, 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 game, 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 game. Hello and welcome to Deal or No Deal. I'm Howie Mandel, and this evening you could walk away with a huge cash prize. Now I think it's time I introduce you to my better half. Actually, 26 of my better halves. Ladies, please. Wait a second, is he married to all of them?
If you don't know how Deal or No Deal works, basically you pick a case and then you pick a bunch of other cases until you're eventually done picking cases and then you pick another case. I probably don't even need to explain this anyway. Everybody knows how this stupid game works. I'll take case number eight. Now this is your number eight. Five minutes later. All right, let's see case number one. Number one. You know it's not good, right? Yes! 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 Well, yes! he knows how yes! this game works. Yes! 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 Oh well. I don't really have that much to say about deal or no deal other than whatever that was that I just did. I guess sometimes uh, what you see is what you get. All right, next game. I'm always finding humongous entertainment games at the thrift store, stuff like Backyard Sports, Freddy Fish, Putt-Putt, etc. I even found a couple big box Putt-Putt games at the thrift store, which are pretty cool. And I also found the next game on the list, a humongous entertainment game that stands out very specifically because I had legit never heard about it before. Big Thinker's Kindergarten. Hello there. This seems pretty typical for humongous entertainment. There's colorful graphics, catchy music, it's kid friendly, but Big Thinker's Kindergarten has something that all the other HE games don't. Omniscient all powerful gods! And inflation fetish. Can't forget about that one. Yes, Ben and Becky Brightly. Two characters with apparently unlimited power capable of doing seemingly anything they can imagine with ease. They're supposed to be fun, but I can't help but find them to be a little bit unsettling. Your mind will grow with all you know and fill your brain with fun. And fill your brain with fun. doing all this stuff. It's never explained. What's what's the source of their powers? I have absolutely no idea. All I do know is that I'm definitely going to stay on their good side. And you'll be a superstar of Big Thinkers Kindergarten. Pick your name, pick which decapitated animal head you want to be, and we're ready to learn. If we get enough smart stars, we'll be ready for the Superstar of Smarts Challenge. Uh, I don't know what that means, but I have played enough humongous entertainment games to know that we're supposed to, um, what was it, uh, click on things? <laughs> Are you winning, son? I don't know, really. Our teachers Ben and Becky Brightly can turn into Clockhead, which I'm assuming is a boss in the next Silent Hill game. They can turn into any animal. I can't get around this pile of food unless you can help me figure out which of these animals I should turn into. Then I could eat up all the food and keep on moving. I can't get past this pile of food unless I can, which I can. Ah. Uh, Cool. They can stretch their arms out. And they can turn into trash cans. Put that litter in me. Uh, Becky, I'm married. I'd appreciate it if we could maintain a strictly professional relationship from here on out. Again, how did they get all these powers, you might find yourself asking? Well, it's beyond our feeble human brains to understand, so don't bother mentioning it. Ben and Becky brightly work in mysterious ways. I just love that they have these absolutely insane powers. They can do literally anything that they want. And all they do is teach kindergarten. I guess I kind of forgot to mention what you actually do in this game. Well, you go from area to area and collect stars. It's basically Mario 64, except there's no this or this or this or Mario and you do kindergarten. Other than that, it's basically the same game. <laughs> Unlike something like Putt-Putt or Pajama Sam, Big Thinkers seems like it is a straight-up educational game. While playing, you'll learn things that I definitely remember to write down, like Counting and computation And Art creativity And of course, I can't forget the best one Thinking skill slash spatial perception It has all the classic humongous entertainment charm, it's got really slick graphics, nice music, and all that stuff, it's just not that fun. So that's unfortunate. Maybe again, the problem is I'm just not the targeted demographic, I mean, uh, I passed the kindergarten grade levels like forever ago. I mean, at least it's at the second grade now. It's, it's more like small thinkers. <laughs> <laughs> more like not really that big of thinkers because you're stupid kindergarten idiots. All right, it's time for the next game, number 
How many freaking games have we played so far? For game number whatever this is, I have a game that could be pretty cool. Lego Creator. Create your own 3D Lego world. All your favorite Lego System Town theme items are available. I didn't know that I had any favorite Lego System Town theme items, but apparently I do, and apparently they're in this game. Let's give it a try. <gasps> He's juggling. I can do that too. I learned this for the for the Princess Maker video. It's been a while. I haven't been practicing. So let me do it to the. Just give me a second. Hi, welcome to Lego Creator. Okay, hold up, hold up. Why did they make this character a wizard but give him just the most normal guy voice of all time? Hey. Click on something to find out what it does. The game starts you off with a default world, and boy, what a world it is. Between the cars driving in circles and the guy just sitting there doing nothing, the excitement never ends. Oh, I wonder what this button does. <laughs> oh, nothing. Oh, wait, what about this one? Oh, God. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't... I didn't... Uh. I'm sorry! It looks like it's just a sandbox game that lets you build little Lego worlds and then you hit the play button and watch them go. I mean, I guess that makes sense. It is called Lego Creator. I don't really know what else I was expecting. It may look simple, but in the hands of a mastermind like myself, you can create something truly special. And I did. I proudly present you with, please prepare yourself, a bunch of naked guys! <laughs> I've never seen someone so happy to be blown up. I thought this game would be fun. I mean, it's a Lego game, and I know there's a lot of good Lego games out there, but unfortunately, this one's really not worth talking that much about. I have found a bunch of other Lego games at the thrift store, though, so maybe we'll talk about some of those in the future. We'll see. All right, everybody, shut the heck up. We got a next, the next game, and it's a big one. Are you ready for this? We cheer too! This is almost as big of a deal as Cheerio, but not quite. No, it is. <laughs> it is. Get hype. We cheer too! From the creators of some of my unironic favorite Wii games, Wii Ski and Snowboard, and Go Vacation. But this is no vacation. This time, we're serious. This is cheerleading. Normally, cheerleading is thought of more as a sport for girls, but our boy Greg here is very forward thinking. He's on his way to not just join the cheer team, but to take over. You gotta show up to your cheerleading audition with your Wiimotes, by the way. That's how they know you're serious. Screw mathematics and William Shakespeare, the time for cheering is here. Grab your Wiimote, make sure your space is clear. Greg is drawing near. He's been banned from the football team because he punched some kid in the sleeve. And now he is dead, so he's coming for your place on the cheer team. So he's coming for your place on the cheer team. Every year the cheer team never wins and takes it on their chins. So he'll replace all these pathetic has with his five identical twins. Greg and Greg and Greg and Greg and Greg and Greg, Greg will run this school forever, F yeah! I wish Greg would Stop staring at me I wish Greg would Please stop staring at me He's coming for your place on the cheer team He's coming for your place on the cheer team even though I obviously don't care about cheerleading at all, I was a little bit optimistic about this game, but unfortunately, it's no go vacation. There's a lot of stuff you can do in those games, exploring and finding secrets, mini games, stuff like that, but in We Cheer 2, all you do is cheer, cheer again, and then cheer some more until you eventually unlock Karen. Yeah, I had a lot of 
lot of fun back in the day when I did the original Goodwill Games episode, but I didn't know at the time if it was really gonna be something I would continue doing in the future. But eventually, while out thrifting, I found this, and I knew it was just something I had to talk about. Oh, goody! A poop spider is singing to me! Just what I always wanted! Once that was done, I began to grow attached to the series, and as I kept finding more of these Mia games, I felt like it was something I had to keep talking about. I guess what I'm getting at is that if I had never found Mia the Search for Grandma's Remedy back in the day, who knows if I would have ever made another Goodwill Games video, much less 10. So I figured it was only right that we end this very special 40 minutes and 14 seconds long episode with another Mia game, Mia's Language Adventure. Hi, I'm the Poop Spider. <laughs> Given that this is Mia's language adventure, we're gonna be learning a new language and we can choose between either French or Spanish. Considering I've taken a lot of Spanish classes in the past, I'm gonna go ahead and pick that one and hope I can remember at least a little bit of it. And of course we're gonna go with advanced mode. I mean, this is a kid's game, how hard could it be, right? Whoa! There's an art show going on in Miaville and the whole gang is here. There's grandma, kid with glasses, the let's play frog, the poop spider, the... Guy. <laughs> and unfortunately, Romaine, who despite constantly doing evil things like stealing and beating up children, is not locked away in prison and is instead running free, enjoying the art show. This art show is also apparently a contest, and what do you know, Grandma Mimi wins. But who could have guessed it? Romaine is at it again with his dirty tricks. I don't know if this is a little harsh, but a uh, repeat offender's uh, death penalty? I mean, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> Attention everyone, Grandma Mimi has disappeared. There is no need to panic. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was probably that lady, you know, from from the cutscene. And you know, Romaine, who does literally every bad thing in, in this game. It, it, it's just a guess. Will you help me find her? I mean, sure, why not? I don't, I don't have anything better to do. So this Bat Lady character stole Grandma because she won the art show, I guess? You'd think she would just take the prize money, but whatever. Let's go save her! And how do we save her? Well, if you've seen the other Goodwill Games episodes, you probably already know the answer to this. You play games! I mean, do quizzes! Lots and lots of quizzes. Specifically in the case of this game, we do Spanish. We save grandma by the power of Spanish. Don't question it. First thing on the agenda is saving this guy whose name is literally Dingbat. Pretty epic troll on his mother's part, I have to say. And once we do, he gives us a scribbled note in Spanish that Mia can't read. So we take it to Let's Play Frog who says there's a device in his camera that can decipher foreign languages. Also, he does this. <laughs> So somehow, this guy was smart enough to invent a camera with Google Translate on it. See the letters floating around. Listen to the camera. Grab the letters it tells you, and then drag them to the little spaces at the bottom of the screen. Good luck! Okay, more like Google Translate that doesn't work very well. Even worse, it seems like this game is freaking broken because all the letters automatically slide up to the top left corner, which makes it completely impossible to pick the one I want. Here's my tutorial on how to beat this game. Slide the letters randomly into the spaces below as fast as humanly possible. That and only that is the way you beat the game. Try again! Try again! Try again! Try another! Try another! Very good! Nope! Try again! Try again, try again. I'm learning Spanish. Now do it like 10 more times. Oh my god, I'm going insane, and it's only the first mini game. This stupid frog's voice is gonna haunt me while I try to sleep tonight. There is your translation. Dingbat wrote, I heard someone speaking Spanish during the blackout. Wait, how did words like El trofeo and El computador help us translate that exactly? Whoa! So Mia goes through a door very normally, helps Glasses Kid who has a mustache now. Our Glasses Kid has grown into a Glasses Man. I'm so proud. She helps Dingbat get out of a cassette player that he got stuck in 
somehow. And she does that by clicking on some animals. Don't know how that really does anything, but oh well. And she meets up with a poop spider who... <gasps> uh, 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 he's dead! Help me. I don't want to stay this way. Rest in peace to the poop spider. Oh, God. At least he was happy in his final moment. Oh, well, let's just leave him. I wonder what this strange calculator is for. Let me guess, it's for learning Spanish. Input the following number. 534. Oh, what do you know? I was right. So we meet up with Blue Ball Robot Guy from one of the quizzes in a previous game, who apparently is a character now. And he says that he needs a spring for his machine. And conveniently, we can just take one from the Let's Play Frog's camera that somehow translates Spanish. I'm sure he won't mind. It's not like it works very well anyway. And with that, Robot Guy has finished making his... whatever this is. So this is the new transport system everyone is talking about. How does this new transport system work exactly? Well, it's simple, really. It runs on... Espanol. What's not easy is this minigame. Three, two, one... Spanish! If you answer correctly, the transport system takes you closer to where you want to go. If you answer incorrectly... <laughs> ah! This is about where I started to regret picking the hard mode. The questions in this game vary in difficulty quite a bit. Some of them are as easy as El Delfin. I know this one! I know this one! I know this one! While some of them are try to remember what Once Mil Ochientos is from my high school Spanish class that, let's be real, I slept through most of. And since I didn't look anything up by principle, this children's game was a little bit harder to beat than I would like to admit. In her travels to rescue Grandma, Mia does some honestly pretty spectacular things, like fix the color in the entire world by learning Spanish adjectives. I don't know how exactly all the color in the entire world got messed up, but Mia is clearly very concerned about it. Just like a vacuum cleaner, it sucked out all the colors. Eh. She also does a lot of other mini games that were very sick and tight. And she even, get ready for this, inserts disc two. That was my favorite part personally. <laughs> Until she eventually comes face to face once again with the evil devil ants. Six, six, six. I knew it. Mia, we gotta get out of here quick. They're devil ants, Mia. Devil ants. Just grab a thing and get out. And as we've been over before, Mia, ants eat mice. Uh, I'm just saying, be, you, you gotta be careful. They will kill you. They will eat you alive. You don't seem nearly concerned enough about this. Conveniently, these ants are very susceptible to lullabies, as this off-brand poop spider lets us know. So she sings to them for a bit and... Fantastic, Mia! <laughs> That's great! Sheesh, the soft brand poop spider is trying way too hard. I wonder what this strange grid is for. Spanish! Everything is for Spanish. I don't know how you haven't realized that by now. Mia es stupido. Mia. Uh, Mia, stop it. B Mia, we, we have stuff to do. This video is long enough already. I was having fun. Well, that makes one of us at least. Eventually, we find Romaine, who tells us that the mastermind behind the grandma kidnapping is none other than... Matarat. Wait, who was that? Matarat. Just one more time, please? Mataharat. Uh, so either Matarat or Mataratata or Ratatata or whatever her name is, is the person we're after. Fine. So Mia pays off Romaine and his henchmen with sparklies to turn on Radita, which is definitely not gonna backfire, probably. They eventually make it to her hideout, get past her weird nipple bat, and big surprise, Romaine is gonna turn on us because he has a huge crush on Radatata lady, but it turns out that Radita is actually short, and therefore, according to this game, not attractive. I'm sure that's a great lesson for kids there, Kutoka. So Romaine doesn't help her, and then we save Grandma. I can't help but wonder, though, how are they gonna get back? I mean, they're kind of far away from their home. They, they, they took some pretty drastic measures to get over here. And so, Mia, Grandma, and Romaine made the dangerous trek back to the inside of the house. They quickly came across the devil ants Mia had put to sleep 30 minutes earlier. But unfortunately for them, devil ants are very efficient nappers and woke up just as they were attempting to sneak past them. Hurry! 
Grandma and Romaine were quickly overtaken by the ant army, and Mia could hear their screams as she skateboarded away as fast as she could. She managed to hide in a clay pot for a brief moment, but it was no use. The ants surrounded her. The end. Bye! I originally thought that this was the last Mia game, but apparently there was another Mia game in 2007 called Mia's Reading Adventure, but I've never actually seen that one before. So maybe one day I'll find it and we can talk about it in another video. Who knows? We'll see. So that is the 10th episode of Goodwill Games. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. And if you did, please like the video. This took a long time to make. And subscribe to see the new Goodwill series that I'm going to come out with soon. I'm really excited about it. Check out another Goodwill Games, or you can watch me play a few of these games live on this video on the Peeps channel. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.